So our presentation today um, that uh, you get to listen to me. Hopefully, hopefully it'll be good. I've had I've kind of gone back and forth on on how to talk about this multiple times. We'll we'll vote at the end and see how we uh, what we think of of this subject. I think it's a an incredibly important thing, and I'll share some statistics here with you in just a couple of minutes about this. But I believe this carrot and the stick or motiv <clears throat> motivating or engaging employees, coworkers, um, is is really one of the one of the huge challenges of the of the day, and that's why we why we threw this on here. Um, of course, this is a loss prevention webinar, and, and and our end goal is to help you reduce losses, keep your employees safe, and avoid lawsuits and all of those things. But this goes a lot deeper than that. This is a subject that that really pertains um, to everything about our organization. So. That's kind of the angle I'm going on. Um, I, I wish this were an open uh, an open forum where you guys could talk back and forth, but unfortunately the the bandwidth doesn't allow everybody to to be able to to talk back and forth. And so I, I'll re rely a little bit on the chat box through this presentation and the Q and A box. So if you have a comment or if I ask for something, just maybe familiarize yourself with where that chat box is, so we can get some some quick responses. On that, because this is a subject that I I think we should that that we should have a, a dialogue about. I want to start off just with that dialogue in mind. I wanted to start off with a with a poll, and so if you would take just a couple of minutes and answer these questions, and then we will share those with the with the group. It's actually letting me adjust the poll the window size. That's great. So, quite a few questions on here, um, or actually five questions or four questions. I had more, and I eliminated a couple. Give you just a second to answer those. See if Doug and Brent will answer these. All right, we've got about 40 minutes. We only get to pick one. Well, you can pick one. But we don't. We can't pick two. You can pick as many as you'd like. I just didn't know if there would be some you'd prefer not to answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to click close poll. We're better than 50%. Well, we're better than 60% now. So I'm going to click close poll, and it's going to make me wait a minute to allow you to, uh, to finish up answering. Okay, so we've closed the poll now. We just want to move this along. First question, do you like your job? 100% um, of the respondents said yes. There were some that didn't answer the question, but 100%. Wow, that kind of surprises me. Um, are, you, are you excited to come to work every day? 47, well, let's see. 22, that's... Uh, I hate that where it doesn't where the the uh, percentages include those who didn't answer, but of those who responded, 47% said yes, 19% said no, um, and the ones that just had no answer were were the sleeping. Um, why do you do your job? Okay, interesting interesting uh, what this question has brought brought out of those respondents. They were they were. Divided in two with a little bit more towards money and benefits. I do my job because I get paid. That's that's the that's the reason. And then the other the other answer was I make a difference. I do something that changes uh, that makes life better for somebody. Um, I enjoy helping people. Um, so interesting. What percentage of your employees or coworkers are excited about about their uh, about their work? I can't read the whole thing. <laughs> I can't see the whole thing. What, what percentage of your, of your employees or coworkers are excited about their job? Are they engaged in your effort? And so this is kind of an interesting thing. We had 100% of respondents say, I like my job. Um, not as many are excited to come to work each day, but the perception of people is 34% of, of people say, 75% um, of their coworkers are engaged. 9% say 100%. Those are the real glass half full type people. 50% say 
uh, or let's see, 19% say that 50%, half and half are okay. All right, Doug and Brent, you got any input on these on these polls? Cool questions. It sounded like uh, my answers were pretty much right in the majority there for the most part. I think that's great. Yeah, Brent, any any thoughts? Yeah, I think it's pretty consistent. Uh, makes you think about it too. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to share some information with you. <laughs> that may throw this on on its ear. Now we may have we may have an exceptional group, but they did a Gallup poll, and this is a regular poll that they do. But the but the most recent one that I that I pulled up, this is one that's tracked all the time, and it's really on workplace engagement. Um, and this Gallup poll found that 50 percent, 52 percent of full-time workers in America are not involved in, enthusiastic about, or committed to their work. 52 percent. Don't give a rip <laughs> about about their job. They're just there punching a clock and taking their check and, and going home. Wow. Here's the next one. 18% more, that's not part of the 52%. This is 18% more are, are actively disengaged. They may they may be actually be doing things to tear down. The workplace to tear down the morale to uh, um, to do things that uh, do things that are against our overall direction. So what does that tell us? That means that only 30% of employees are actually excited about their jobs that are actually engaged in what they do. That's a that's a real difference from the poll that we had here. And uh, I'm hoping that in general um, you are are just really positive and your organizations, your coworkers and employees are positive and excited about that. But the reality of this poll is they've been taking it for a long time and what they found was this was actually a pretty good year. Some years it's even worse than that. Um, and I think that's a huge challenge that we have in our workplace. So what does that mean? If we've, if we've got 70% of our employees that don't give a rip about about the job, about what they do, what does that mean for our quality of work? What does that mean for our quantity of work, for the customer, for the care that our customers get when they come in and out of our building? And of course, what does it mean to our safety performance? Are we going to have more accidents, whether it's whether it's a work comp injury or a, or a car crash? If somebody doesn't care, are they more likely to have an injury? Well, I would I would lean towards the answer being yes. So this is a major problem for us. Here's here's one something I'd like your input on. What's the problem? Why are people not engaged in their in their workplace? And I'm going to put Doug and Brent on on uh, notice here to think about this question. Um, if if people don't respond on their chat box, but what is the problem? Why are employees not engaged in their job? I think there can be a disincentive to engage. You know, if you feel like if you open your mouth and say something or try and participate that, you know, you, you don't feel appreciated or maybe the opposite even happens where you have some negative consequence for, for your, your participation. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Brent? It could be the morale or the way the organization is, is run or structured. It could be supervisors, the way they treat their employees, or maybe lack of motivation there. Yeah, I really think, I really think that's, the, that's the case. Um, people feel like, um, people don't feel like they make a difference. People don't feel like they make a contribution, and in the in the research I did on this, this is one of those common one of the common things of why people are dis dissatisfied in the workplace, or why they disengage is because they don't feel like they make a contribution. The the ideas that they have, the things that they bring forward, may not be valued, and so and so instead of getting angry or whatever, they just disengage. Um, but I had a had an interesting just thought as I was going through this material. Um, I thought back to some of my experience. I, I we as as loss prevention folks deal with a lot of people around the state, um, whether in training or one on ones, doing risk assessments, whatever it may be. 
we, we work with a lot of you folks out there and, uh, and we enjoy that interaction. And sometimes we run into you at the grocery store. We run into you at, at, at other events. And I've just, I've noticed over the years, a number of people that I work with, um, in, in our tr trust member entities volunteer and they do some, they do some great things. Um, I've gone to, you know, whether it's a, whether it's a nonprofit organization or, or something like that, you know, I've seen things, seen people at wildlife, at wildlife things. I've seen people dealing with food drives and, and blood drives and, and all of these, all of these different things. And, and I kind of, I kind of tied that together of why do we have 70% of people that are disengaged in the workplace, but they're willing to go out and volunteer their time for a church organization, for a, um, for some other, uh, you know, the United Way or, or some other organization like that. They, maybe they teach CPR or do something like that in their spare time. Why would they do that? And I think it really is the answer to those questions. They feel like they make a difference. They make a contribution. They do things that matter. Um, and their ideas are, are, are valued. That's a huge thing <clears throat> in, uh, in our observation of the carrot and the stick and what we need to do to have an engaged, motivated workforce um, so we can accomplish our goals as an organization, so we can have so we can have good safety performance, so people are healthy and, and able to do their tasks and, and treat the customers right and, and all of those things that are, that are really our overall goals, um, this should be something that we, that we keep in mind is people need to feel valued. Um, so just along with that, I ask, I ask you, is your job important? Is what you do every day, that task, what's the most meaning, you know, menial, um, task that you think is kind of a worthless, unimportant job, um, is, is it important? Well, if you uh, happen to go into the restroom and you see this, <laughs> that menial task that uh, you may think is pretty unimportant and, and uninspiring and it doesn't help people, well, it's pretty important when you find yourself in, in this situation. So whatever our task, we need to find some meaning in that. And how do we do that as managers? How do we help our employees realize the impact that they have on other people's world? Well, that's really where we, where we come to this subject of engagement and the, and the carrot and the stick. So here's a quick definition of engagement. An engaged employee is defined as one who is fully absorbed and enthusiastic about their work and takes uh, positive action to further the organization's reputation and interests. Wow, that's a pretty that's a pretty high bill to be able to be fully engaged. How do we <clears throat> how do we go about um, engaging people? And whether this is in our workplace or or maybe we're working for one of those nonprofits or other other organizations like that, how do we engage people? How do we get them to really buy in to what we're selling? I'll ask you a question. Why do you do your job? And everybody, just in sake of time, I'm not going to spend a lot of, a lot of time on this, but why do you do your job? Um, we asked that question, and I, I threw out some, some um, sample responses there. And number two on that, besides money, was I make a difference. And I think many people that work in, work in governmental agencies, um, you know, I look look around at the, at the folks that are, that are signed in today, and we have people from cities and counties and special districts, and, and some of these are, are human services type organizations. I think we probably gravitate towards those things for that reason. We could probably go, don't tell, don't, don't tell your boss I said this, but we could probably go into the, into the private sector and make more money than we do doing what we do. I know, I know each of us, um, in loss prevention, left jobs, we were making more money to come work at the trust because of what we felt the trust stood for and what, uh, and, and what we were getting in that we could make a difference in people's lives. Uh, don't want to speak for Doug and Brent, but that's really, that's really the, what I was looking at along with, the, along with the pension. That's good too. But, you know, all of those things combine to why we do what we're, what we're doing. 
So ask a question. I'm gonna. I, I I would love to get responses. That's why. That's why I'd love to have this be open because this question I think um, is is just one of those good questions. Who was your favorite teacher growing up? Whether it was in grade school or junior high or high school or in the or, or in college, who was your favorite teacher and why was that? Doug Brent, you got an answer on that, Brent? Yeah, I'll go ahead. Uh, I remember my eighth grade history class, American history, my middle school teacher did a great job and he always stands out to me because he was so enthusiastic. He was a former military guy and he was just passionate about our country and the history of it and he brought so much energy to the class that it really engaged and motivated us to learn. Um, that's something that really stands out to me from him. Awesome. You felt his, his passion that made you want to engage more. This is one of those questions that as, as I do this, as I talk about these type of subjects in a, in a live session, um, people get really emotional and, and passionate about this. Oh, I remember Mrs. whatever her name was and, and, why, and why was she your favorite teacher? Because she, she cared about me and she, and she, wanted, to, um, she wanted me to know that I meant something. Okay? So, so those are important questions. Um, let's turn it on its head just a little bit. Who is your best supervisor? Um, who is your worst supervisor? And what was the difference between those two? When you think of those good feelings that you had about that teacher, um, can you say the same? Do you think your employees could say the same thing about you? Are we creating an environment where people can participate and, and make a difference? Um, how, excuse me, there we go. How do your employees perceive you? That's the toughest question of the entire presentation is how do they perceive you and how do they perceive your organization? And that is probably one of the biggest questions that we have to, that we have to answer. And it's probably the one that may hurt the most when we think that 70% of employees are disengaged. Why is that? In that same survey, they found that, that, employees or managers were much more engaged new employees were much more engaged but the longer they were at an organization the less likely they were to be engaged to be excited about their jobs um, and so what is going on in our organizations that takes the wind out of people's sails that's a question that each of us have to, have to ask ourselves and how do we change that change that to make it to where people are excited to come to work. They're, they're eager to help other people and, and, uh, and reach the goals that we're looking for. All right. And, and, and just ask that, how do our employees perceive their job? Okay. So what motivates people? We get down to the, to the crux of the uh, crux of the presentation today. When we talk about the talk about motivating factors, what is it that motivates people? Now, obviously money, is a motivating factor. If you're if you're making, uh, you know, I think back to, to my first job um, milking cows, and I was making two dollars per per hour. Now I thought I was pretty rich at 11 years old when I was making two dollars per hour milking cows, but uh, but uh, you know, in in today, there's no way that I could I could put food on my family's uh, table for $2 per hour. So money is a motivator. You've got to make enough. You've got to have enough money um, to, to really put food on the table and take care of those simple needs. We look at this uh, Maslow, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And this is, this is really, if you've ever dealt with management or, um, or motivation, this is, this is one of the prime things that we talk about is what is it that, manage, that motivates people? Well, uh, at a base level, we need food, water, a place to rest. It's, it need a place that's warm uh, out of the cold. That's a pretty simple thing. They're basic safety and security go along with those. If I'm living in a really dangerous neighborhood and people are getting shot in the street, that's going to be a pretty, a, a pretty big motivator to me to do something to change my situation because I don't have general safety for my people. But when we get beyond those basic needs, then there's, there are other things that we look at. Belongingness, um, love, 
do we feel love at the workplace? We'll talk about harassment discrimination later, but but that basic uh, but that basic thing of, of do I belong in this organization? Am I a part of a team that's working together? Do I have do I have self esteem? Do I feel that I'm accomplishing something? Those are those are real needs that everybody has. At the top of this pyramid, we have something called self actualization, and that's and that's achieving our full potential, including creative things, doing something different. Um, it's interesting, um, there, there are companies out, this is kind of in the tech world, but companies that will, that will do, um, they'll take a day out once a, once a month or once a quarter, and they, they called it a FedEx day um, until they got sued by FedEx, with, and were served with a cease and desist order. But the idea behind a FedEx day was you take a day off of your regular duties. You don't do any of your regular duties and you create something different. You create something to solve a, solve a problem and it's called a FedEx day because you've got to deliver it overnight. So you take this day and the next day you're going to present your idea, your solution to the, to the group. And it, got, and it uh, has been super successful in these organizations to come up with with some great with some great ideas, and some of those have turned around into into real products that have that have helped a lot of people and and uh, made the company more more successful. So, um, what is that self actualization? What is the thing that it takes um, to to get people get people's juices flowing? Um, how is it that we that we can give people an environment to where they're they feel free to to come up with an idea that may benefit others. Okay, well that brings us to the carrot and the stick. This this is one of the <clears throat> one of the original um, theories when it comes to motivating and managing people is what what does it take to get people to do what the organization needs them to do. And so the carrot and the stick are really, really basically, we whack people for the behavior we don't want. They do something we don't want, we do something negative towards them. If they do, do the behavior that we want, then we reward them for that behavior. Okay, what are those rewards? What, is the, what are the punishment? Well, that varies from, from, one thing to, from one thing to another. All right, so let's talk about the stick. And a lot of times we talk about progressive disciplinary programs. We talk about um, we we talk about a, a system of punishing people if they break the rules, if they do things that the certain behaviors that we don't want. Well, while these are really important in our organization, we need these for a lot of reasons. A lot of those are legal. If we ever have to take uh, take action and terminate somebody or or, or some more serious disciplinary action. It's important that we have a system that we that we follow to be able to, to uh, ensure that we're doing everything right and that we're treat, treating people equally. Um, these are important, but they're but they're not a positive motivator or very effective. And I'll talk about that um, talk about that a little more why they're not very effective in just a minute. Um, however, they can be effective in some situations. Fear is a motivator. And there, there are theories out there that say that fear is the only motivator. I'm scared that I'm going to, uh, I'm going to lose my job and, I'll, and I won't be able to feed my family. Okay, that's a motivator. And it is a strong motivator. Does it, does it encourage people to be creative and, and, come up with, uh, and come up with things that will make the organization better? Probably not. But if we have a really narrow focus, if somebody has a problem with getting to work on time <clears throat> and we say, hey, if you don't get to work on time every day this month, we're going to take some disciplinary action and you may not work here anymore. That is a real fear and it's a narrow focus. Okay, I have to get to work every day on time and it can be really effective in those cases. But it's not going, it's not going to be really effective in, in helping, helping somebody be creative and, and, and come up with out-of-the-box ideas that will make our organization better. Just because I'm motivated doesn't necessarily mean I'm happy about it. I'm motivated to get here to work every day, but that negative side of it can, can 
affect my morale, can affect my uh, the rest of uh, the rest of my job and my interactions with other people. So there's a negative side to that, even though the stick is important. We need to have that in place. So just a couple of thoughts about the stick. Uh, these on these progressive disciplinary programs, they're a necessary evil. We need to ask ourselves, what is the what is the goal when it comes to a stick? And the stick is really not. We're going to terminate this employee. I'm putting all the putting all my documentation in place because I want to get rid of this person. That should not be our goal. Our goal should be how do we help this employee achieve the goals of the uh, that we've set for them and uh, be a valuable part of, a, of the organization. That should be the, the overall goal is helping this employee succeed. We need to be very consistent when we do anything with the stick because we uh, because that's we'll be judged on on that specific thing are we consistent in our treatment of one one employee versus another of course documentation is important I, important i can't do a presentation without talking about documentation um it's it's essential that we do that and if you have a verbal a verbal discussion with the employee um about discipline that needs to be documented even if it's a verbal put that in a put that in a in a safe place and uh, and maintain that. Okay, so here's a here's kind of why the stick is not as effective. Is <clears throat> take a look at this sign, and let me ask you about this sign. How much is your behavior affected by a 55 mile per hour speed limit sign? Well, it's the law, right? And if you and if you break that law, you can get a citation. Well, ask yourself ask yourself a question. Did you ever exceed the speed limit driving into work today? How effective was the stick in your world? There's a reason why we do things um, and, and the stick is not as strong a motivator as other reasons. We look at seatbelt compliance. In the state of Utah, we, we implemented a seatbelt law. Um, oh, I was going to look this up. How many years ago? 20 plus years ago, probably close to 30 years ago, where the seatbelt law came into effect, and it was a secondary enforcement law that required people, that required officers to have something else to pull somebody over for before they could give them a seatbelt. Uh, violation. So you had to be speeding or have a tail light out or something like that, and then the officer could give you a citation. Well, in recent years, we changed that to a primary enforcement. So the so the so the person driving could be pulled over specifically for not wearing a seatbelt. Well, as we looked at the compliance rate for people wearing seatbelts, this was a survey they'd done uh, done for a long time, and what they found is that when we changed it from a primary enforcement or from a secondary enforcement to a primary enforcement law, there was no change in the seatbelt compliance. There are about 17% of people that just say, forget you. I don't want anything to do with this. I don't believe in seatbelts or whatever their excuse is. And that 17%, they're not going to do it. Um, so the stick has its limitations. Okay. We talk about the carrot. The reward, we call these if-then programs. So if you do this, then I will give you a reward. So they can take various different, uh, various different forms. Sometimes it's simple recognition, and this can be extremely powerful. If somebody gets, uh, gets um, some positive reinforcement, you know, the person that, the person that cleans the bathrooms, um, you know, if the boss comes in and says, wow, that was awesome. I have never. It, I, I will. Li I will drive across town <laughs> to come to your building to use the restroom here because I know this is the cleanest restroom in the uh, in the city. If you if you give somebody a, a positive reinforcement like that, that can be more powerful than than a bonus. It can be more powerful than than the stick by far. Other things. Empowerment, autonomy, giving people some, giving people some leash to be able to go out and create and and come up with solutions to problems that you have, can also be powerful. And incentive programs. You've heard us talk about incentive programs a lot, and I'll talk about that a little more um, today. But those can be powerful things to get people on the right path. So these are steps to get people on the right path. Some people, 70% are not engaged today. 
That's what that statistic tells us. We hope it's not that bad in our organizations, but that's what, that's what the overall statistic is in the country. How do we get people off the line? Well, we're not going to take them from, from a glass half empty or there's dirt in this glass to, <laughs> to really positive and excited about helping things in one day. These, these things take steps. It takes time to move people along. And it really comes down to a trust, um, a trust equation. When we show employees that they are trusted and that they can, and that they can um, really be free with their ideas, we change the game. All right, so recognition. Uh, that recognition is critical. How often, do you, how often do you tell employees or coworkers, good job, hey, that was really awesome, or you know what, today really sucked, but you made it okay. You know, something like that can, can really change somebody's attitude, okay? Um, telling people, simply opening your mouth and doing it when it happens. And, and this can go both on the carrot and the stick side. Whenever there's something that we, um, that we observe that's a positive behavior or a negative behavior, we should take action on it now. Not wait for the annual review, not wait for, not wait for oh, I'll talk to him at the, uh, at the end of the month. But right now, walk up to that person and say, thank you very much for doing that. That really made a difference. You know, we had a customer that came in and they were really, they were really angry and you did a good job of, of handling that situation. I know it can be stressful and all of that, but you did a great job. And, uh, and, and, you know, we'll talk about some incentives, but, you know, a, a direct reward for those types of things can, can totally change not only that person's, not only that person's behavior, but everybody in the, in the area that, uh, that witnesses it. Okay. Uh, just a couple of things, performance reviews, you know, I kind of poo poo those don't wait till the end of the year, but that is a huge opportunity for us to be able to reinforce positive behavior. Um, especially since there's some money on the line. We've got raises, we've got uh, some other incentives that may, we may be able to throw into that mix and, and let them know, here's why. You know what, I observed, and you remember me talking to you, to you about this, that you always, you always wore, your, wore your personal protective equipment. You, you know, I remember those a couple of times when I complimented you about bringing safety items up to the, to the team to keep them safe reinforce those positive behaviors. Um, and then incentive programs. We'll get to those. So when, pe when people believe in something for their own reasons, they believe more deeply and, and adhere to it more strongly. Um, Daniel Pink said that. I, I forgot to get his name on there. Um, but this is, a, this is an important concept that as much as our organization has goals and a, and a mission statement and all of that, if the employee, if you and I don't do it for our own reason, we're not going to be in it wholeheartedly. But if we do it for our reasons, um, we are going to dive in and we're going to spend a lot of time. Just a, just a thought on this. Uh, we'll, we'll throw out two scenarios here. You have a, an important report or an important project at work, and, and it is, it's, you're, down to a, you're down to a deadline. Um, you don't really care a whole lot about this, but you're down to the end of the month, and you've got to finish this, and so you're, so you're up till midnight to get this report in. What's your, what's your attitude? about the organization, about this task, and about, and, a, and about the overall situation that you find yourself in. It may not be too good. Flip that on its head, and let's put yourself in a situation where your child has a science fair or has an assignment that's, that's due, and it's the end of the month because they procrastinated it, and they've got to have this done. Do you stay up till midnight with your child and, and help them through that? Um, and, and most of us are going to answer, yeah, I'm going to put in whatever the, whatever the time is. And what's the reason? What, what's the difference between those two things? 
Well, it really comes down to, I believe in this child. I want this child to survive and <laughs> to thrive, and, and, I, and I love the kid. And even though I'm a little frustrated with the, that they procrastinated, I'm going to do whatever it takes to help them to succeed. Okay? How do we flip that in our workforce? Um, Simon Sinek, he's one of, my, one of my favorite authors and speakers, he says, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. What is it about what you do? So um, just, a, just a point on this, I, uh, we probably have some people in, the, uh, people in the audience today who ride my motorcycles. Dangerous things, right? <laughs> Be careful out there. You think about Harley Davidson motor, motorcycles. Um, does that conjure up an image in your in your mind? And I don't care if you're a, if you're a biker or not. Harley Davidson conjures up an image in your mind. Is it a um, is it a positive image, a negative image? What is it that that Harley brings out in your mind? What about Harley customers, people who um, people who buy Harley motorcycles, or even just identify? with that. How much do they identify with the mission of Harley Davidson? What is the mission of Harley Davidson? Just think of that in your mind. What is, what is it that they're trying to sell? So they're obviously trying to sell motorcycles and leather jackets and, and, and all the accessories that go along with the, with the bike. But what is it that they're selling? They're selling an ideal, right? They're selling something that, um, that means something over and above a product. Okay. What can and and to the point of people who buy into Harley Davidson will actually tattoo <laughs> Harley Davidson on their body. They will put they will put the logo on their body. Now I'll ask you. I'll ask Doug a question on this. No, that'd be mean. Is Harley Davidson the best motorcycle in the world? Doug, Brent. That yeah, that's it's embarrassing. I don't have an opinion. <laughs> you don't have an opinion. All right. Well, I will. I will uh, give you an opinion. Harley Davidson do not Harley Davidson does not make the best motorcycles in the world. And I know I'll probably get beat up in an alley for saying that. But if you want a if you want a motorcycle that is that is reliable gets good gas mileage that you know is not going to leave you stranded on the side of the road somewhere <clears throat> you're probably going to buy something different than a Harley Davidson but Harley sells something different than that they're selling a, a, a dream and an ideal and so people will buy into it the point of tattooing that on their body well how do we get people to buy into our uh, buy into what we're selling and that really comes from, from a lot of motivators. And it's not one thing. It's, it's, it's something that we do overall in our organization. Um, you know, we are engaged in a great cause. You know, with Harley, that's one thing. If there's, and there, there are other organizations that people buy into. People don't go out and tattoo Procter and & and Gamble on their body, right? I may like the soap that they make or the, or the paper towels, but I don't buy in that much to where I'm going to tattoo that on, their logo on my on my body. But if I buy into Harley, I'm there. Um, so how do we motivate people? How do we get people that are 70 percent sitting there in in uh, la la land? I believe questions um, can help in starting this out. Ask them something in, in maybe our program that we put out there. A question elicits an active response. It elicits some action from us. If I make a statement, you just go, yeah, I agree with that, or no, that's dumb. But if I, but if I ask you, are you safer today than you were yesterday? Have you made a difference in your, in your organization this week? What did you do this year to make your organization better? That is a lot more powerful than saying you ought to do something. You ought to be safe. Wear your PPE. Those types of things. And, and as we look at slogans and we look at and we look at incentive programs and things like that, let's talk about stuff like that. Other things. We got to get past that 70% of I really don't care about anything 
we need to we need to come up with something that sticks. Rhymes or or some catching messages make them sticky. They make them stick in our mind, and and that message can get through easier. If I say click it or everybody's going to respond, we all know it's click it or ticket because it's a it's it's a message that sticks in our in our head. Does that mean that everybody wears their seatbelt? No, but for a lot of us, that's a message that that really hits home. All right, so let's talk about incentive programs. You, you all, if you've been around the trust for the last for the last year or two, you've known that this has been a major focus um, for for a number of reasons. And, and number one is is it works. Um, this is one of those steps in changing our, our organizations, and so our culture gets to the point where we have the values. Well, like I said, we can't do that in one day, and so we have to we have to do these in steps and an incentive program is a great way to get people's awareness to get people engaged hey there's a there's a ten dollar gift card way of riding on this if everybody on my team um, goes this month without having an incident so i'm going to make sure and if and if my coworker is out doing a job without his safety glasses on i'm going to i'm going to say knock it off hey i want that gift card it's ten bucks not a huge amount of money. It's not a not a major thing, but it's something that gets people's attention and increases their awareness of our overall program. We focus a lot on safety um, because because that's really our focus, and it should be yours as well. Having people safe and working and and working to the fullness of their of their abilities really helps us to to reach our other goals. It encourages the right behavior, discourages the bad behavior, gets participation going. Um, we want to build on positives, not just correcting people for that. So let's just look at, at some of our results and, and what we've seen. We did a, um, we took a group of our members, some of our some of our larger members, and we had a bunch of those adopt a safety a safety incentive program, and a bunch didn't. And uh, and and we and we allowed at least one year. So if they had, or if they, if they had a program in place at least by the middle of 2018, that was that was a safety incentive program that meets certain met certain criteria. Um, we tracked that group, and then we tracked the other group that didn't have that. And that was this focus group number one. And what we found was not only did they have an overall increasing number of claims per month. But over that time period in 2018, we had a 7% increase in their overall claims per month. They're going the wrong direction. We're having more incidents instead of less. Then we had another group, and these were both fairly sizable groups, that was focus group number two, and they were ones that had a, an incentive program in place that was what we called qualified. It, used, it had some basic categories, some basic uh, requirements in it, and here's how they performed. This same group had an overall increasing frequency of claims per month until they implemented these programs. Um, and, and what we saw from that group was they had a 38% decrease in their overall claim frequency um, over, the, uh, over 2018. This is, uh, this is um, pretty hard to ignore this type of a, of a difference in these, in these groups. We've got one group going the wrong way and one going the right way. These incentive programs work. Are they the do-all, end-all to fix all of our problems? Not necessarily, but they definitely can get us the right, going the right direction. They can get our employees engaged and aware of, of what, our, what our programs are that we're, or what our concerns are and, and where they need to be focusing and what they can do. So that's why we encourage these things. A few critical components, and that's what we, when we talked about a, a, a um, qualified program, it's having a team element working together as a group. Whether you take it as peer pressure or peer support um, is kind of just your, your angle on that thing. But if, there, if there's a group and you're watching out for each other, you know that you're in it together, um, that ups the game. We have visible results. This is a, a huge part of it. Repetition, repetition makes things stick. 
Repetition makes things tick, right? And so we want to have these results out in front of people on a regular basis. We don't, um, we don't necessarily, um, or if we if we do an incentive and we we roll it out to everybody at the first of the year and we don't talk about it until December, chances are you're going to fail. If we're talking about it on a monthly basis, and especially if upper management is pushing this and saying this is important to our organization and we want you to be safe, we want you to be healthy, and we're going to we're going to give you a little a, a little bonus for doing that. It might be a gift card, it might be a barbecue, it might be whatever whatever motivates your people, but that's uh, but that's what we're doing and we believe in it and that helps get everybody's eyes on the on the prize. Um, we like a we like a monthly reward. Um, and whether that's recognition or an actual award, a, a gift card, a barbecue, or whatever it is that, that works with people, something on a regular basis where we're, where we're in front of the people and saying, good job, here's what we've, here's what we've done. Management commitment is a, is a huge part of this. Um, as, we, uh, as we rolled out our TAP program for the year, management commitment is a major part. We need, we need managers, uh, especially upper management, to, uh, to share their commitment to having a safe workplace. To, uh, to having people do the kinds of things that will create a safer workplace and a safer community. And so, we've, and so we put that as a, as a TAP requirement, management commitment, have management set some goals. Come up with, come up with three goals for the year and a plan of, of how, to, how to achieve those and how you're going to, um, how you're going to monitor that, uh, the progress towards those goals. This is a huge part of that. All right, I have got more slides, um, but I'm thinking I'm looking at time here, and I think this might be a good point to wrap up so we can have some, some questions there. Um, this is a this is an important uh, an important subject. I, I spent a lot of time talking about incentive programs, but the overall engagement of our employees. We've got to realize that we're that we're in a in a bad position to start with. Um, just because the overall perception of the workforce, 70%, is they are not really engaged. They don't really care a whole lot about their job. They're just doing a job. We need to, we need to embrace that, that problem and come up with ways to fix it. And, uh, and a few of these we've talked about, you know, really opening up the lines of communication, um, using, our, uh, using, our, um, using our voice, and, and really pointing out to employees when they're doing well, when they're not doing well, and opening those things up, making people have, feel that they've got a, a, they've got a voice and that you'll do things. Give people, uh, give people some little wins. That's why we like this monthly, uh, monthly safety incentive program is because I get a win every month. And months go by quickly and it's like, wow, we did it. That's awesome. And uh, and and those small wins will build momentum. They will help us to um, they will help us to uh, to get the entire group engaged and involved. And if we're working together as a team, we're going to be successful. All right. Uh, so that's the that's the subject. Please, if you've got questions, go ahead and type those in the chat box or the Q and A box. Looks like I've got one question here on won't gift cards get us in trouble with the state auditor? And this is a this is a common um, a common concern that we have. We have to be careful. Uh, we have to be careful with these, but they're not banned. There's something, and you want to talk to your you want to talk to your your own financial auditors and your financial people on this to to make sure that we're covering it right. We do have to call. We do have to track these uh, as as um, income, unless they're if 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 we're doing a barbecue, that's if we give people food. We're not going to have to track that. Gift cards, we do have to we do have to capture that data, and so what most places will do is is just simply take um, take that. Hey, you got ten dollars per month, and congratulations, you've got it every month for the entire year. There's 120 dollars, and you want to build that into your overall program's cost and pay the taxes on that. Um, you know, your employees will see that there'll be a little extra. There there'll be some other taxes on that, but I would build that into the program. Um, you definitely can do this. 
Um, but you, you know, we, you want to control those gift cards and, and ensure that, that we have good accounting controls on those so they're just not passed everywhere. Um, and, and then we definitely can do that. All right, looking to see if you have any questions. While the questions are coming in, um, Doug and Brent, do you have anything um, that I may have missed or input on uh, on these, this question that we've had? Jason, I like the, the part where you talked about recognition for those that do a great job. I'd like to recognize Jason Watterson for doing a great job on this webinar today. So he Thank always does a great job in producing these and doing great with our programs. Thank you, Jason. You're here. I got a little pitter patter right there from that. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's a it's it's an awesome thing to do that. Doug, did you have something? I gave it I gave a here here to Brent's comment there. Oh, that's what it was. <laughs> Thank you. All right, I'm not seeing a ton of questions on here. Actually, any questions? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap that up. Yeah, it, it's true. We actually several years ago we did. Um, uh, some training where we were talking about what motivates people. Uh, it was quite a while ago, but I remember getting some feedback from about 150 people that had come to a training about, you know, what motivates them in their job. And, you know, we go to work to get a paycheck, but the reason, you know, we do the job that we do usually isn't just for the money. You know, people want to you know, be valued. People want to make a difference. People, you know, want to be engaged. And really, there's a, a direct correlation between people, uh, employees' morale and how valued they feel or how uh, much of a difference they feel they make in their work. And it, it's important that we, we help people feel, you know, important and valued and, and uh, that they are contributing. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, Doug. And and it doesn't matter what job you're doing, whether it's filling the uh, filling the toilet paper roll when it's out, or or, or you know, president of the United States. Um, it, you know, those are those jobs are all important. We get a we probably get maybe a few more a few more pitter patters of our heart in in our world because there have there have legitimate legitimately been a number of times when we've when we Say, can say that we save people's lives, and uh, and those are those are great things. But the but a anything that we do that is is beneficial um, to to other people out there is an important thing, and we need to recognize that and and help people understand that it's important and and that they're a valued part of our of our organization. All right, looks like we just had some comments. Some thanks. Thank you so much, folks. If you have questions about this or any other subjects that we have out there, please, um, please give us a call. We're happy to talk you through these things and and do whatever we can to to help out um, on your journey to uh, engaging employees and having more success in your workplace. All right, everybody, go out and have a safe day. <laughs>